So I'm going to be talking about laminar flow. That is a slow fluid flow, and we're going to be talking about it in the case of a circular tube, which we're going to say is analogous to the flow inside of the nuclear reactor core, up along the fuel pins between the fuel pins for the coolant, which is water. And our goal for the case of a circular tube here is to calculate the velocity profile, which looks like this. And you can see that that velocity profile changes in the R direction. But we're going to assume that it does not vary in the theta direction. and that it does not vary in the z direction. The reason we want to calculate this velocity profile, which we're going to find is parabolic, is because we need it in order to calculate the pressure drop as the fluid flows along through this channel. And the approach we're going to take is one of a control volume. It looks like this, where we're going to use the concept of a shell that varies between two radii, so a delta R, and that delta R is where the shell occurs. So we have a shell, a, a cylindrical shell, much like a can of delta R shown here. And we're going to integrate along R using our shell balance approach. So, What we did last time is we had two equations on the board, one for mass and one for momentum. And what we did was we wrote those out in the very general form and we applied a number of simplifying assumptions. So during last class, we assumed the properties were independent of temperature, allowing, and there was no energy generation, allowing us to ignore the energy equation. We assumed the fluid was incompressible, so it had a constant density. And we were assuming it is flowing in only one dimension. So on our last slide, we saw that we had Uh, the R, and then we have the theta and the Z directions. And the fluid is only flowing in the Z direction. We're also assuming that this flow is already fully developed. It has developed the velocity profile we're trying to calculate. We're not trying to calculate the time-dependent entry of the fluid. And we're assuming it's flowing at steady state, so we don't have changing conditions. And as our pipe is drawn horizontally, gravity won't have an effect. So those are our assumptions from last time. And we were going through an 11-step process. We're going to make our assumptions about symmetry and constant properties. And then we are applying them to the continuity and momentum equations. And this is where we arrived. Let me show you this equation a little bigger. So we had written out our mass equation. And we have an expansion and acceleration, expansion and contraction, rather, term right here. And then a bulk movement of that mass in and out of the control volume term right here. So expansion and acceleration of the fluid within the shell control volume plus the flow in and out of the control volume equals zero. And we were able to simplify that by saying we're at steady state and uh, that our density is constant, giving us the gradient of V equals zero and recognizing from our symmetry conditions, one dimensional flow, that we have only flow in the Z direction, we end up with dV dZ equals zero from this equation. 
since we have no r flow and no velocity in r, and we have no velocity in theta. I should point out that um, v, as shown in this equation right here, and as shown in our momentum equation, really is a product of three terms. So V equals the square root of Vz squared and Vr squared and V theta squared. So these three components of our velocity, the z and the r and the theta, make up the overall v in our general governing equation. But we're saying that vr is zero, and we're saying that v theta is zero. So obviously the square root of vz squared then gives us vz. So in our particular case, our simplifying assumptions allow us to say that the overall velocity is just in one dimension. We had also written out the momentum equation. And we had said we're in steady state. So uh, we don't have to worry uh, about, um, about our bulk acceleration uh, in terms of momentum, changing the overall motion of the fluid through the control volume. And uh, we're not going, and, but we're going to keep our flow acceleration term. Uh, we can't cancel that out based on the assumptions that we've made below here. Uh, we're going to replace our shear stress right here uh, with its definition relating to the viscosity. And we're going to assume there's no gravity. So this simplifies our momentum equation to be over here. where we have our um, flow acceleration uh, or any, any flow uh, change in that flow being due to the viscosity and the pressure gradient. And we do indeed have a pressure gradient. That's what's driving this velocity in the z direction through the tube, causing a change of the velocity of this velocity in the r direction, even though it's not a velocity flowing in the r direction, the velocity in the z direction is changing with the r direction because of the viscosity or the friction within the fluid itself. So in this equation now for momentum conservation, we need to expand out our terms in cylindrical coordinates for grad v here and grad square v over here and pressure over here. So that's where we got these nine terms down below. And really it's just coming from these three terms and the velocity. So we see the three terms Vz, Vr, V theta. And then uh, we have Vz, Vr, V theta in the del squared term. And then we have the Z, R, and theta directions for pressure. But our pressure gradient is only in the Z direction. And our velocity, um, if you look at the velocity in the theta direction, it doesn't change. If you look at the velocity in the z direction, it doesn't change. But if you look at the velocity in the r direction, or you look at the velocity, uh, the overall velocity with respect to r, vz is going to change with r. So this is an overall velocity v. It's not vr here, it's just v. And Vz, which is V, changes with R. So that gives us our simplified equation. The pressure gradient is driving a flow in the Z direction. That flow in the Z direction is dependent on the radius R. And that is what gives us our velocity profile that we saw um, back here, this velocity profile right here. 
Okay, so here's our momentum equation. Here is our velocity equation, and that's where we left off last time. Thanks.